In this video, we'll discuss how to improve dust lanes and galaxies and dark features in Nebula. I'll explain the techniques needed and then demo them in Photoshop. Finally, I'll demo my free Photoshop astronomy action that automates the process. By understanding the techniques used, you'll be able to apply this process using any reasonably competent graphics package, such as GIMP or Photoshop. I'll take you through step by step the techniques I use and explain how the effect of each combined together to give an overall effect. One exception to this is the technique used to separate the stars from the background. This is such a core technique, it requires its own video. And when I've produced it, it will be available to link to from the in video link. If you don't want to miss it, please subscribe. Let's start with layer mode basics. Feel free to skip ahead if you know this. Images can be made up of layers. How the layers interact is dependent on the layer mode. And the default layer mode is called normal, simply shows the top layer. Layer modes change how layers interact with the layers below. For example, darken allows darker pixels from layers below to pass through the layer. In this example, the darker areas from below pass through the mid-gray upper layer, whilst the lightened layer mode does the opposite, allowing lighter areas of the image below to pass through the layer. There are lots of layer modes and it's often worth experimenting to see what they do. The layer mode we are going to use is called overlay. It provides a contrast boosting effect. Let's delve into what this layer mode does as it plays an important part in our process. If you understand the overlay layer mode, feel free to skip this bit. First, let's simplify and explain the graph. The horizontal axis indicates the color of a pixel in the lower layer. This is from the original image. The color of the line indicates the color of the corresponding pixel in the upper layer. Here I'm only showing a line for mid gray. This is the midpoint between black and white. And the vertical axis represents the color of the resulting pixel when the overlay mode is used. So for a mid gray pixel in the upper layer, we can read the graph to find the corresponding result. And you can see if the upper layer is mid gray, then the overlay mode has no effect on the final image. Each color in the lower layer translates to the same color in the resultant image. So now let's look at what happens if the upper layer is black. All the grays on the lower layer, darker than mid gray, are converted to black, and tones lighter than mid gray are significantly darkened. If the upper layer is white, then you can see that all tones on the lower layer, lighter than mid gray, will be converted to white. And the tones darker than mid gray are all brightened. For tones in the upper layer, darker than mid gray, you can see that the effect is to darken the resulting pixel. And for tones lighter than mid gray in the upper layer, the result is to lighten the pixel. So in summary, overlay mode modifies the, the brightness of the pixels of the layer below based on the grayscale of the pixels in the overlay layer. We will use this overlay mode to create a contrast boosting effect. We will also be using the minimum filter. This expands darker areas of an image into the lighter areas. Let's look at this in a little more detail. If we take this test image and apply the minimum filter, you can see that the lighter colors are modified. The finished white line has disappeared and the other white lines have reduced in thickness, whilst the dark lines have got thicker. I'll flash between these so you get a good idea of the effect the minimum filter has. 
we will use this filter to add emphasis to the dark areas in our nebula. The last element we need to understand is the high pass filter. This filter is good for detecting edges and change in an image. The radius parameter helps you to tune the filter to the spatial scale of the change that you want to detect. This might be easier to get a grip of by showing the impact of different R values on a test image. Here is the test image, it's just a checker pattern, but you need to get your head around the different scales of change in this test pattern. You have the changes in the checker size, which are happening at the scale of the size of the squares in the pattern, but there is also a change happening at the single pixel level around the border of the squares as the pixels move from black to white. If we use a radius that is much larger than these patterns, then nothing interesting happens. And as we reduce the radius, we start to see changes occurring as the radius starts to approach the scale of the larger checkerboard. You can see that this is starting to highlight the edges, but the smaller checkerboard is unchanged. And as the radius gets smaller still, the effect starts to affect the smaller checkerboard pattern. For the large and medium checkerboard, the edges are now well defined. And when the radius is one pixel, it is only detecting the boundary where black and white meet we will use this to detect the edges of the features in the image. OK, let's now put all this together. Our example image, the Pac-Man Nebula, has changed on lots of different scales. The stars rapidly move from sky background to bright star, and as we don't want to increase the contrast of the stars any further, we need to separate them from the image and I will discuss how to do this in another video and leave a link to it in the description and an in-video link here. If you want to see this video, please remember to subscribe. So let's assume we've created our sky background layer with no stars in it. The first thing we need to do is to duplicate the layer. Remember the minimum filter. If we apply this to our copy of the sky background, it will erode the lighter areas and expand the darker areas. Don't worry too much about the look. We're only doing this to help the next step in the process. And this is the result. I'll flick between the images so you can see the effect. We now want to detect the edges of the features in the image using the high pass filter. This produces a mostly grey image and we'll use this with the overlay layer mode to create a contrast map for the layers below. With the layer mode set to overlay, the layer below is selectively contrast boosted at the edges of features. And because we boosted the darker areas earlier using the minimum filter, it is the dark areas that affect it the most. I'll click back and forth so you can see the overall effect. Now with the stars added back in, you can see the final impact of this filter. I'll flick backwards and forth so that you can examine it closer. Of course, I have more to do on this image to finalise it, such as reducing space noise, which I also have a video on. But for now, let's look at this process in Photoshop. OK, here we are in Photoshop. Let me just load the test image. This is an image of the Pac-Man Nebula. Um, this image has not had anything done to it other than it's being calibrated and stacked um, using AstroPixel processor. So the first step is to separate the stars from the sky. I'll explain how I do this um, in another video.
that's that done. We've got the layers we can see now. We've got a, a starless layer and a stars layer. I don't actually need the stars layer, so I'll get rid of that. And just to make it easier to see what's going on, I've removed, turned the background off for now. So the first thing we're going to do on our starless layer is a minimum filter, which is in other minimum. Set that to about three pixels. You can see the effect there as it's made those dark regions bigger. Okay, now we're going to do a high pass filter. So again, in other high pass, and um, you know you can't see a great deal here. But you can see that there's this is where that black blob was. We can fiddle with with this to change it if we want. Perhaps we'll try it. We'll try it there, see what happens. Uh, last time I did it at 9, this is 27, so it's a bit more extreme. Let's see. Okay. And now we change the mode to overlay. Turn the background back on. I don't know if you want to see the impact. You've got that and that, that and that. We just zoom in a little. Sort of, probably get too much. You can see what's going on. Okay, you can see that the contrast of the dark areas has increased. Okay. Right, so now I'll delete this and I'll show you how this action works with my actions. So we've still got to create a, um, a starless layer. It's quite a long process creating a starless layer. Definitely one you want an action for. You don't want to be doing it manually. Go to layers, get rid of the stars because I don't need them. Back onto the starless layer, I go to actions, and now I want the um, minimize. No, I want the where is it? Uh, Galaxy Dust Enhance. Click on that. So all my actions come. Um, they tell you what version they are, I update them reasonably regularly. Um, they're non-destructive, so they shouldn't change any of the layers you've currently got. They act on the layer that's currently selected, um, and they include a history snapshot uh, so that you can um, go back to what it was before um, you applied the, the action. Click Continue. And they always say what's happened afterwards and give you some tips. So um, it's just saying you can toggle it on and off using the layer visibility, which we was doing earlier. Tweak the strength using um, the layer opacity. Um, and if it's too weak or strong, then you can use something called the super duper galaxy dust enhance action instead, which I don't think I've published yet. Continue. So now let's just look at these um, before and after. Before and after, you can see it's quite a nice. Just adds a little bit of extra detail to the image, and that's the demo. Hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have enjoyed it, click the thumbs up, and um, if you want to see more like this, then please subscribe. And I always welcome your comments if you want to leave some comments 
in the um, description below. That would be great. Um, see you in the next video.